Good morning. I'm gonna start some coffee before I get too far into this, actually. Now I can start. Good morning. It's 9.41. I just got out of the shower. My hair's still wet. I'm tired as heck. I could really go for a breakfast sandwich right now. I love breakfast sandwiches so much. In New York, right by where I used to work, there was this one breakfast place and it got shut down for about a month and a half because of health code stuff. I think there were rats in there, but I didn't care because the breakfast sandwiches were so Good. Karen and I moved to Los Angeles about two years ago, and I love the city. It's great. I'm having a great time here. We're making good progress. If you need writers, please hire us. I haven't found a place around me that hits all the same points as that beautiful rat infested breakfast space that I used to go to. And I didn't even know what the points were until very recently. And it's become so clear to me that there are three things that build up to my personal philosophy of the perfect breakfast sandwich. Coffee's kicking in. Gonna make me have to poop halfway through here. That's gonna take a good like 15 minutes out of this shoot. Don't say it on camera. Look, people know that coffee makes you poop. I drink coffee half for the taste, a quarter for the caffeine, and then 100% for the poop. There are three things that make up a perfect breakfast sandwich. And if you have, at least one of them, you're gonna have a good time. The thing about breakfast sandwiches is that even the bad ones are pretty dang good. Tenet number one, a breakfast sandwich must be simple. When you heard me say the word simple, you might have thought cheap. You might have thought basic ingredients. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about simplicity. It is 10.01 in the GD morning and I am hungry as heck. Okay, imagine over here, this is my want to make a breakfast sandwich meter. And here is my want to eat a breakfast sandwich meter. Okay, as this one goes down, this one goes way up. And that is why simplicity is key. This is what it should be like. You're asleep. <laughs> breakfast sandwich. You should not think about it before that point. You need a breakfast sandwich. It's time to make one. If it takes longer than 20 minutes to make this breakfast sandwich, that's too long. I have gotten this down to a science. I'm able to make at least two breakfast sandwiches perfectly in 20 minutes from the start of when I turn on the hob to actually getting it on the plate and munching in. 20 minutes. That's all it takes. We'll test it today. So you know you're gonna have a simple breakfast sandwich. What has to come next? Tenet two. The breakfast sandwich must be symbiotic. I, I saw Karen, let me show you, let me give you a, a quick replay on what Karen's face just went right there. She was looking at camera, looking at camera. Karen doesn't believe me when I say that the symbiotic relationship of the ingredients of the breakfast sandwich is key. But she's gonna believe me after I give you my spiel because I'm very good at speaking what I wanna say first try. Never, never screwed it up before. Always perfect first try. Never had to take a second, never, never had to take a second take. Never done a second take in my whole goddamn life. First take so always never second perfect take. take. Nine, one, first, eight, second, one. Yes. Do it. one what do you mean symbiotic relationship, Brian? This isn't biology. We're not talking about the sharks and the little guys that go <laughs> on the shark and stick onto them. That's not what we're talking about here, okay? What I'm talking about is that every single piece of the breakfast sandwich needs to be in conversation with the other pieces. There need to be a bunch of handshakes left and right, the, the cheese and the egg and the bacon or the sausage. In a perfect world, if I'm thinking back to that favorite place of mine, the one that I will not name because I did mention their rat problem once, but again, I think they fixed the rat problem, so it's not a problem anymore. They cooked it all together, all in the same space. The eggs were right next to the sausage. They put the English muffins onto the griddle as well. Everything's working together. By the time I get to my work and I peel it off and I take that first bite, everything, it is a symphony. They are harmonic. I will say one of the reasons why I've had some trouble with Los Angeles and breakfast sandwiches uh, is that I personally am a big fan of a sausage egg and cheese. 
I think that is not the popular thing now. I feel like bacon, egg, and cheese has become, it's taken up about 90% of the market share there. I've been going to a lot of Los Angeles places and I've been asking for a sausage, egg, and cheese. And you know what they do to me? They give me sausage links on a sandwich. They put a hot dog in a hamburger bun and they give it to me and they say that that's what I, that is not, no one should ever put sausage links in a sandwich. Unless you're like building it up Jenga style and it's like a fun log cabin of sausage links. That's probably a bad idea. I don't, I don't think I would want to eat that. It would be too tall. Beyond the fact that putting sausage links into a bun means that they can roll out and it's kind of a mess, but not a fun kind of mess. Those sausage links are encased. They're in their little casings and they don't want to break out of their shell. And that means that those sausage links aren't being symbiotic with the rest of it. I want it to be one thing. I want it to be cohesive. I want it to be, you know? And the way that you do that is by making sure they're all working in harmony. And now we get to what might be the hardest element of my breakfast sandwich philosophy. I've been toiling over the griddle for months now, trying to figure out what is it missing. It's simple, it's symbiotic. I am working so hard. I have made dozens upon dozens of breakfast sandwiches and I still haven't managed to make the perfect one and I couldn't figure it out until I thought about what it was at that breakfast joint that really made it all come together. Tenant number three, when you're receiving your breakfast sandwich, the person has to call you boss. That's it. That's the hardest thing to do. Because the thing is, when I'd go into that breakfast sandwich place and I'd be tired and I'd be whatever, always, always, 100%, the guy behind the counter, he'd say, What can I get for you, boss? And it was like a burden had been lifted from me. I said, hey, yeah, I'll, I'll have a breakfast. Uh, give me a, uh, hey, can, well, can I have a- um, Spit it uh, out, boss. Uh, yeah, I'll have a bacon, egg, and cheese. I'll have a sauce and egg, egg, and cheese, depending on what day, depending on how I was feeling. And he'd say- You got it, boss. And he'd go make it. And all day long, I'd be like, wow. Guy called me boss. Finished cooking it up, he'd say- Here, here you go, boss. God. What a delight that is. If you have never experienced the joy of going into a kind of semi-grungy breakfast sandwich place and have the guy behind the counter say, Hey boss, what can I get for you? It is a delight. Haven't quite figured out how to make that work when I'm cooking it on my own. But maybe by the end of this, we can figure it out together, okay? Now what I have here is just kind of a, a big roast pan. It's usually you put a big chicken in it, you put it in the oven, whatever. But the beauty of this is that it's high walled and it can go over two different oven stove top burners. Stove top, stove burner. It goes over two of them. Now, one of these back here is way smaller than the one in the front. It might seem like, hey, whoa, won't that make it uneven? That's the point. When I'm making a breakfast sandwich, it's never just for me. I'm always making one for Karen. I'm always making one for someone else. We're having a good time. But that means that what I want is for there to be a back area that is slightly less hot than the front. This is where the cooking gets done. This is where the looking gets done, as they say. That's where I put the things that are pretty much done and then I can keep them warm over in the back. Here are the ingredients for my version of the perfect breakfast sandwich. We've got bacon, we've got sausage, we've got hash browns, we've got egg, and we got bun. And also cheese. That's it. And the beauty of it is that all of them are going to help the other steps in the process. Symbiotic, you understand. So let's go ahead and toss these babies on, shall we? We'll put them right up in the front, right in the zone where the most heat is. They'll hang out there for a second. I know that normally the way that I cook is very high energy. Uh, and by high energy, I mean uh, with a lot of anxiety. But the beauty about this one is that I'm not rushing, and never once am I like, oh shoot, oh, I gotta make sure I get that thing out right now or else I'm gonna uh, overcook everything. Everything's gonna be easy breezy. Take it slow. If you don't like bacon in your breakfast sandwich, I would still say that bacon grease is a great way to elevate your breakfast sandwich. It's worth it, especially for what I'm about to do, which is toss on the hash browns. I've made my own hash browns before, but in order to make them super crispy, you have to like shred them the night before and then like parboil them and then like freeze them and salt. Like there's so many extra steps in order to get it crispy on the day of. I found that 
this is one of those things that's just easier to buy. Just a nice little frozen amount. You're gonna use less than you think. I want one single layer of hash brown. Okay, because I want it to be super crispy. It's more of like a wafer than anything else. I'm not, I'm not putting like a thick McDonald's style hash brown on there. This is there for the texture. We're putting it right over the bacon grease that we just had. Move them around just enough to, to soak up all of that bacon grease. And then you are not going to touch them. It is going to be hard. But I am going to ask you, do not futz around with these hash browns. You leave them where they are, okay? Now that they've all soaked up all of the bacon grease, I just go ahead and I form them into little patties. Again, trying to get them as flat as possible so that it gets super crispy. Okay, all right. I know I said don't futz with it, and now what I'm doing is futzing with it so much. Okay, but I'm just gonna keep them there, and you are not going to touch them. You guys can hang out at the top over here in the looking, not the cooking section. Now while we're getting that stuff, I'm gonna get these buns ready. And then it's time for, in my personal opinion, the star of the show, the sausage. Once again, I'm going to ask you to trust the process when I say, do not move this sausage at the beginning. You're gonna wanna futz around with it. Lots of chances to futz. Zero need for futzing. I found the easiest way to do it is to try to like squeeze at a top bit. You want about a golf ball size. And then I just take that amount and I put it right down onto the bacon grease. And again, don't touch it. You're gonna look at this, and you're gonna say, that's too big of a thing, what's going on there? Don't touch it. Don't touch it. You're gonna want to, but don't do it. Brian, that's a silly amount of a, a sausage. It's not gonna get cooked all the way through. I'm getting to it. Don't touch it. Trust me. Where are we? 1036? Honestly, we've gotten further than I thought, even with all my talking. But that being said, you don't want it to be too fast. Part of keeping it simple is keeping it relaxed. Since we didn't futz with these, there's a tiny little pad on the back end that has been cooked. This was something I, I've learned over many, many experiences of this is that you want to flatten out this sausage as far as you can go. You want to get those edges real thin because then they get extra crispy and nice. By having that little bit of cooked sausage, it is just enough there that the sausage doesn't get stuck to the spatula and it does flatten out really well. And that's what we're, that's what we're looking for. You want to squish that sausage out to what seems like too big. Here's an example of what the bun size looks like on top of it, it's a little bit beyond that. But remember, the sausage is going to shrink as it cooks. I'm looking at my hash browns right now. We have let them sit there for like, what, five minutes? What I do is I very lightly push it around. I make sure that it stays fully cohesive. It doesn't break off into any other parts. Only then do I start to futz and flip it over. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and let it soak up some of the other oil from the, from the sausage back there. Uh-oh, it's time for another element of symbiosis. We're toasting these buns, baby. We got so many good juices going on in here. You don't have to do any extra seasoning, don't need any extra salt, any extra pepper. And that's saying a lot for me because I love salt. I love it a lot. I love salt a lot. We're gonna go ahead and put on two of these buns in the meantime, let them uh, toast up a little bit. It's been a while since uh, I've had a chance to just kind of like chill out and talk to the camera as things are cooking. It's just, it's really relaxing. There's so many things you could be doing right now. You don't have to like be locked on it. You could be doing your Duolingo. You could be practicing your Korean. I, let me just do a, a listen up. Babo Gatun Singa. Babo? Babo. Gatun. That's the first thing you got. <laughs> I agree that this was a foolish idea. Uh, I'm gonna put my Duolingo away right now. <laughs> you know what, now's a great time to talk about condiments. I'm a ketchup apologist, all right? And that's not right. I don't need to apologize for ketchup. I'm a ketchup believer. Ketchup adds that extra layer of like a nice, I mean, if you get good ketchup, if you get, I'm talking out my butt right now. I'll just say that I like ketchup. Karen, you gotta not. Okay, sausage is getting pretty good now. Oh yeah, sausage is looking nice. 
let's take a little look at these guys back here. Oh, as I'm lifting them up. All right, it doesn't, they're not super toasted, but they are, they are getting a little hard. So I'm gonna just go ahead and take these guys off. Now it's time for cheese. Since these sausages have both gotten to the point where they feel pretty comfortable, I would say, I'm gonna put them up into the looking section. While the sausage is up there in the looking section, that's a great place to melt your cheese on it. Oftentimes, a breakfast sandwich becomes fancy by changing the cheese. You put on a smoked Gouda, you put on a Swiss, a Jarlsberg. I think that's great. But for me, breakfast sandwiches are all about American cheese. It melts so perfectly. It's so good. Again, symbiotic with the rest of the sandwich. And that's what we're going for. Other condiments that you should have for your breakfast sandwich. I would say that outside of salt and pepper and ketchup, you should definitely have a hot sauce. There's a lot of people who love hot sauces on there. Chili crisp is good. I've, I've put chili crisp on before. You can make it lettuce and tomato. You can do avocado on it. You can do whatever you want. Let's, let's go ahead and flip these while I'm talking really quick. That's perfect. And now it's time for us to do the eggs. In order to get your uh, eggs all set up and ready, you're gonna need something very important. It's called a bowl. A bowl. It's called a bowl. So I've got three eggs in here. Oh, it's such a good color. It's such a good color. And then I just kinda, I do a, a just what I call a very bad omelet. It's, it's e extremely effective at getting the eggs the right size using the walls to your advantage so that way you can try to square up this egg. Now that's looking pretty good. Look, even even with me chatting it up, I'm still sub 30 minutes uh, for the, right? Also, you, I would say that you turned on the stove and then it took you five to 10 minutes to start cooking. You're right. I'll take that, Karen. So let's just go ahead and say it took me 23 you minutes today. I did it. Let's just say I did it in 20 minutes. No issues. Here, Jeremy. What's this number? Oh, yep, exactly 20 minutes, as I said it would be. There we go. Swap that in. Now you can see the delightful experience there. Just cracking some pepper over there, getting it all over my counter as well, beautiful. Don't want no ketchup water on it though. Just a little bit. That's a lot. <laughs> I like ketchup. Honestly, if you feel like it, wrap this up in tin foil it can help everything melt together even more. Give it five minutes, pretend you're going on the subway for a second, do a full LARP of living in New York. I've done it, I'll admit, I've done it. But then all you need to do is bite on into it and that's what it's all about. Mm. Mm. It's so good. It's so good, it's so simple. But it's so nice. Honestly, I should have made one of these and then made the video, but then I would have had two breakfast sandwiches in a day. Hasn't been the first time. The softness of the bread with the crunchiness of the bacon, the crisp hash brown, the spiciness of the sausage. Again, I don't really need hot sauce right now, which is really good. And the egg is not overcooked. It's still fluffy. I managed to keep it you know, just to the point that it's not bleeding egg out of there, but it's light and it adds this nice cushion to the whole thing. I gotta have another bite. Now, my favorite breakfast sandwich mm. spot in Los Angeles is my house. It's this kitchen. That said, if you know a good breakfast sandwich place in Los Angeles, you should let me know. I will drive too far of a distance for a good breakfast sandwich. Please tell me, anywhere in Southern California. It doesn't even have to be in Los Angeles. Please let me know. Although I have this beautifully simple and beautifully symbiotic breakfast sandwich, it is hitting all the points for me except for that third tenant. Unfortunately, I still don't have anyone to call me boss. And me calling myself boss is honestly more sad than if I were to just not be called boss at all. So I won't do it. But there's a reason I made two breakfast sandwiches this morning. And it's because I saw that you were hungry. Here you go, boss. Hope you enjoy. Well, I bit my mustache hair <laughs> as I was eating that. that. That's the one thing about having a full beard now is I gotta get used to that. Here, I have to. I'll open it up. I'm ready to eat now. I just need someone here to make sure that I have 
the mustache is out of there. Oh, flawless. Mmm.